16 in the creative finance series. This is amazing. Do you think the people watching this are like, guys, please go faster? Or do you guys enjoy us going longer? Like we're two buddies talking I'd love to about know that. Yeah. yeah, make a comment down below. I wanna know, do you guys want these to be seven minute videos? Do, they have, do you have the attention span of a gnat? Or, <laughs> or do you enjoy these 20, 30, 40 minute videos? If you have the attention span of a moth, then we'll keep them shorter. Yeah. But if you like all of the extra, we'll keep going because I think really to talk about these topics, 20, 30 minutes, or even maybe a little less, but that's a lot to really go through it the right way. I, I mean, it takes, to be honest, real estate is a lifelong endeavor. Yeah. And you're gonna continually learn things every single day. I look at people that go, what is subject to? And it's a three minute video on YouTube. And I'm like, no way. It's That's so surface level. You gotta get a 20, 30 minute video. And then on top of that, you gotta get your hands on top of a lead to really truly understand this. And we're gonna do that on this video because we're talking about notes, mm -hmm. number 16 in the Creative Finance Series. Guys, there's a link below to the playlist. If you really wanna go through all of these strategies, Pace has broken down each one. We've done an entire video about each of the main creative finance strategies. We'll probably keep adding because there's lots of ways to do these. And Pace is actually on this video, we're gonna talk about notes and he's gonna actually break down a real live deal that he did using the note as a creative finance strategy. So first of all, Pace, for someone watching this right now, what is a note? When we talk about notes, what even is that? Do you remember watching Dumb and Dumber and they were in Aspen and uh, Lloyd was on the, la the, the stairs of that big nice hotel and he was like handing out money and all this kind of stuff to people? And then at the end, basically he was handing people IOU sticker stickers like, oh, I owe you money, I owe you money, I owe you money. Oh, this is 250,000, you're gonna wanna keep this. 275,000, might wanna hang on to that one. <laughs> so those sticky notes, is how I remembered what a note was. Yeah. Is it's literally, an, it's a real estate IOU, yeah. is what it is. Jerry and I, let's say we create a note, meaning Jerry sells me, in fact, this house. You yeah. sell me this house, mm -hmm. you and I have a note between yeah. each other. that's right. Actually, we have technically three notes. We have the sub, sub two, two, a seller finance, and, a, and a, a consulting note. Yeah. We have three notes. So go back and watch that video. That's a really good it's video. In the, it's in the playlist. Yeah, it's amazing. So Jerry and I have three notes between each other. Essentially, it's three promises to pay about different amounts of money, different terms, different lengths, et cetera. And each document is its individual own note or I owe you money and here are the terms associated. Let's put that on a document called a note. That document also some people call paper. Mm -hmm. Some people call... Um, carry the paper, carry mm -hmm. the note. What are some other things that people say all the time? I always use paper, it's a very, in the industry, that's a very common word to use, paper. It's just referring to that note. Right, so somebody will important. say, hold the paper. Hold the paper. Carry the paper. Yeah. Create a note, uh, create some paper. What are some other weird things people say? I mean, the technical is promissory note right. is what you're often referring to. Why is it called a promissory note? Well, it's the promise to pay back and the terms involved in that agreement. Yeah. I think it's important too, Pace, there's, there's secured and unsecured notes. Mm. And in real estate, we often are referring to secured notes or collateralized note, and that's where the mortgage or deed of trust comes in. That's where it we, we take the asset, the house or the real estate, and we attach it to the promissory note as the collateral. Right. And so a lot of times people misunderstand, they use, they use the wrong terminology. Everybody knows what they mean, but when people say, my mortgage, Yeah they're actually not referring to their mortgage. The mortgage is actually the collateral to their note. Right, correct. A more a more correct term would be the loan. That's referring to the whole thing. Right. But you have the note and then you have a deed of trust or a mortgage depending on your state. And that's 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 collateralizing your note. But a lot of people have an unsecured note. So like, let's just say I, I came to you and said, hey Pace, uh, I wanna buy a boat, can you lend me 50 grand? Mm. And, Pace, and Pace says, yeah, here's 50 grand, let's sign a note. But Pace doesn't collateralize the boat meaning it's just a open-ended It's a handshake. Loan. It's like the credit card company. That's an unsecured loan. Interesting. Because you're promising to pay that money back, yeah. but, but you're not attaching collateral to it. So if you default, they're not taking your real estate. They're just, the only the only thing they have is a uh, repercussion, I guess, they, is essentially they can hit your credit. That's so, it. So yeah, an unsecured note, you could still sue for non-performance or you could wreck someone's credit. Right. But an unsecured note means there's no asset attached to it. Whereas with real estate, we often, that's why real estate is, is the most amazing investment you can imagine because you get to attach a hard asset to a note. Well, let's talk about that. So when is, a, when is a note created? I've got a couple of little examples and you'll probably have a couple as well. Is let's say that I have a seller. Let's make this a little bit bigger. So you can, my sellers are big people, okay? 
Really big people. And are these their legs that go like this? Yes, those are their okay. legs. Okay. I guess that's a leg. Yeah. Here's a skirt. <laughs> okay. So and this seller, let's make sure this is nice. Well, now they don't have any legs at all. A nice thick boy. How about this? A nice thick boy. So we got this seller and the seller has a house. I go to the seller and I say, hey, seller, I want to buy your house, but I want you to sell it to me on seller finance. So the seller says, no problem. How do we document this? How do we make sure that this is done properly? And I go, well, let's say you're going to buy the house for $200,000 and I'm going to give you 10% down. Okay, well, let's take the 10% off of that. And how much would I then still owe that seller? 190. 190. Uh, 180. Oh yeah, 10%, not 10,000. Yeah, right, so 180. It's going to say, I bought it for 180. The seller's going to say, when, how long do you, of a term mm -hmm. do you need? I go, well, seller, you know, I'm kind of crazy. I want it 30 years, just like I would go to a bank. Seller goes, okay, no problem. And I go, seller, how much interest would you charge me? They go, oh, 5%. Perfect. There's my note. That's it. That's basic terms. Yeah. Basic terms. There'll be a due date every month and some other things, penalty if you're yeah. late, but that's it. But the overall thing is price right? It, the overall thing is purchase price, down payment, the total amount that is going to be loaned or given as, as a note, how long I need it for, and what my interest rate is. Mm -hmm. That's a note, right? So when, a, when you buy a house on subject two, there's already an existing note. It's already existing. So I'm just taking over somebody's existing note is sub two. In a seller finance situation, I'm having to create a new one. A new one. Now, who creates the note typically between these two parties, Jerry? Well, you, because they're not going to know how to create a note. Right. So either you yourself can create the note, or B, you can hire a transaction coordinator, mm -hmm. or C, you can hire an attorney, or D, you can go to a, like a title, es title or yeah. escrow, right? So the seller is never going to create that note. I, I have on occasion, when sellers really know what seller finance is, they go, hey, do you mind if I have my attorney look at everything? Mm -hmm. I go, not a problem. You go ahead and do it. Or if they're an investor- so if sometimes an investor. they may have their own way of doing it. Okay, so a note has now been created and I continue to make that payment. When I go and sell this property to my buyer, my buyer brings their money to the table and the first thing that gets paid off is my underlying note. This gets paid off, taken care of, and I take whatever the remaining balance is. Okay, that's when the note gets paid off. Either I pay it all the way down um, or I sell the property and my buyer pays it off or... What can my seller do with that note? Hey, just a quick thanks to one of our sponsors and we'll get right back to the video. This video is brought to you by PropWire. Now I get asked all the time how to find motivated seller leads and PropWire is simply the best software for finding leads and downloading lists. And the best part is it's 100% free and there are no limit to how many leads you can download. PropWire has vacant houses, pre-foreclosures, absentee owners, REOs, auctions, high equity properties, probate, tired landlords, and more, plus custom filters and stack lists so that you can laser target the most motivated sellers in your area. Plus they have cash buyers and private lenders nationwide so you can quickly wholesale houses and fund your rehab projects. Oh, and one more thing, this is not some seven day free trial that requires a credit card. Anyone can create a free account with just their email address and start building lists and downloading leads for free right away. Check it out at joinpropwire.com. Your seller could say, I'll sell this note. So the seller created the note. Now you're saying the seller could go and sell the note? Not the property, the note. Basically ch change who the bank is. Right now the seller's the bank, mm. but if they sold the loan to, let's say, Jerry. So why, would say, they, why would they want to do something like that? To cash out of their loan, cash mm -hmm. out of their note. So like maybe this seller has a wedding to pay for mm -hmm. or like um, maybe they have a business debt that they want to pay off and they go, ooh, I have this, this asset that I've created between Pace and myself. I'm going to go sell this. Who do they sell it to? An, another investor that wants to own paper, own loans. I like to think about it this way. Let's take your scenario here, 180000 When this seller made this note with, let's say this is Pace, mm -hmm. when they made that note, they were okay to collect interest and stay in the property, not get cash, instead right. get cash flow. That, that made sense to them, they liked that idea. Well, six months from now, a year from now, let's say they're like, man, I really need cash, really need cash right now. Well, they can't sell the property because who owns the property? Mm. Pace. But they could sell the underlying note, let's say they sold it at a little bit of a discount for 160. Yeah. 
Now they just get 160,000. Nothing changes for Pace. That $180,000 loan is there. Pace just makes his payment now to lender B, let's say Jerry, and nothing changes for you. Well, this ha- this actually happens this a lot. This actually happened. Banks do this. People don't know people don't realize this. If you guys have had this happen to you on your own mortgages, I, I guarantee own, everybody has. They're going to be like, "Oh yeah, I get a letter and they're saying servicing company has changed yeah. or whatever." It's because your Bank of America or Chase or Rocket Mortgage or Fannie Freddie somebody sold the note to somebody else. Quicken Loans does not hold the paper. They make the loan and sell it. Right. Somebody else buys it. See, that's the thing that people don't understand is that Quicken Loans, Rocket Mortgage, Chase, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, they don't typically hold Mm -mm. the note. They create the note. They get paid fees for creating the, the note. You pay a lender's fee. They go, we're happy. We make the money. And then they go sell that off to somebody else. Now they get their cash back. They book another loan. That's how most of the lending, traditional lending works. Why can't we do that in the investment world? Yeah, we do all the time. Yeah. That's the cool thing. And so the buyer on this, who's who's the typical buyer for like an individual note? Who's that demographic? Who's that person typically? Well, there are investors that like instead of owning cash flow rentals where now they have to manage a rental property, mm-hmm. they would prefer to just own paper and get cash flow in the form of loan payments from borrowers. So the, here, I, I love that. And, that. and here's how I look at that exact situation. So when people are starting out in real estate, let's say that they have a really busy nine to, f- nine, to, um, nine to 10, right? Nine, <laughs> That's nine, the entrepreneur. That, exactly. <laughs> well, the entrepreneur is like five to nine, yeah. right? So let's say that they're like a doctor, a lawyer, maybe they, they're in med school, they jump into being a doctor and they're making a couple hundred grand a year. And they go, man, I want to get into real estate, but I don't want to actually manage real estate. What's a really great way for them to get their hands on some cash flow? Yeah. Owning notes. Buying notes. So I say for the first couple of years of people's journey that are passive investors, they will invest in notes as their primary source of income because they go, I don't have to manage a tenant. I don't have to deal with any BS. The toilet breaks. Nobody calls me. All I have to do is I receive money on my note. And if I decide to get out, I can sell that note to another doctor or lawyer who's also busy as well. Now, at some point they go, all right, I got my feet wet. And they go and they start building a portfolio by maybe buying other rentals and other things. And then what I find out is that when they get into their twilight years, probably about 55 to 65 years old, guess what they start doing again? They start converting their portfolio back into passive notes Mm. because uh, Mm -hmm. they go, this portfolio was great. It made me a lot of money, but man, this part of my journey was really hectic, right? You create a lot of notes. Yeah. Let me show you how I do it. And then, cause I want to see your big million dollar one. That's amazing one. But I just did this on a property in, um, close to Indianapolis, north of Indianapolis. So I bought this house for 60,000. Then I sell it on a note for 90,000. Oh, we got to forget. We forget here. Switch. This switch is my, oh, I'm this man's, hand. this man's left. a lefty yeah. guys. So this is, I'm, we should have been on the other side. The I'm right handed dude. I didn't know I was going to be holding the cool pencil. Well, now you got the thing. Be careful of the stand behind you. Just FYI. Okay. It'll fall on us. Okay. So we're at 60,000. Yep. So that's cash. I'm out. Yeah. Now I turn around and sell it to a retail, right? Uh, for 90,000. Mm-hmm. And we did a note. So we create a seller finance note. I'm the seller slash bank. Yep. Sold it for 90. Now my, what's, what do I have deployed in cash? 60. Over time, I'll get 90 with payments. Yeah. Yeah. So there's an interest rate, I'm making a payment. Well, I don't want my 60 in cash to sit out forever. Mm -hmm. I'm okay for a minute, but not forever. I'd like to get some of that back. So I have a note buyer. This is an investor that wants to own paper. So in 12 months, I'm a couple months in, in 12 months, and here's why 12 months, if I season it out to 12 months, meaning if if I show that the borrower yeah, the borrower has paid payments on time. Yeah. I got to prove it. If they made payments on time for 12 months, they'll pay me 90 cents on my note. Hmm. So what's what would that 81, be? 81,000. 81,000. So they'll give me 81,000 in cash on my six, so I so I'm $21,000 in outlay in 20 in 12 months. In 12 months. Now, in the 12 months, I'm creating cash flow cuz yep. they're making a payment to me, so my 60 grand's working earning money. Yeah. And then in a year I sell it, I get 81, I get all my 60 back plus 21. Nothing changes for them. They still have a $90,000 note that somebody else owns for 81,000. Yeah. So now what are they how are they making money? Well, they picked up that interest rate. They picked up that 7% interest rate on the 90, 
where they only have 81 out in cash. Mm -hmm. So think about it. Their their actual interest rate is higher because they only paid 81 to buy a $90,000 note. Whoops. Oh, that's my bad. Have you guys have you guys ever wondered what a um, pension fund does with the money? Think of, think about like all these. Uh, I, I deleted. Oh, you deleted it. it. Yeah, sorry. I pressed this button right here on accident. Don't touch I, that I went button. Like this boom. So um, think about like a police pension fund, firefighter pension fund, city pension fund. How are our school teachers receiving a pension? Where does their money get deployed and invested? A lot of times it gets deployed and invested into. Um, hedge funds who are going out and buying swaths of notes. Yeah. And they're saying, oh, this is great. Jerry, let me see your pen real fast. Jerry created a note for 60. Okay. Oh, man, I made it fat. You made it super fat. Whoops. Okay, so Jerry created a... You Jerry, want a skinnier one? Yeah, give... Uh, no, that one? No. You oh, go here one. to... I don't know what I did, but I, I'm okay with it. I can handle There we go. Okay. Okay, so Jerry basically is 60000 out of pocket... He sells this to somebody for 90 and he creates a note for $90,000. This big N is a note. You then decide, hey, I'm going to sell this note to somebody else for 81000 And Jerry's out of the deal. I'm out of the deal. The 81 comes back, fills your pocket back, because now you have a hole in your pocket of 60000 fills your pocket back up, and you walk away with $21,000 in cash. That's your benefit. Plus, ca plus cash flow I made in, in 12 months, but yes. Right. So now the person who now bought that for $81,000, what I find is a very typical buyer for this is a police fund, a firefighter fund, et cetera, because over the next 30 years, okay, the pension fund will receive on that $81,000 probably to the tune of $160,000 to $200,000 in payments for that 81000 note. Because you put 4%, 5%, 6%. This interest. was 7%, yeah. So 7%. They're, they're going to probably get $250,000 over the term of their 30-year mm -hmm. note. That's how much that interest will add, add up Huge. to. Huge. So how does a pension fund pay all of everybody's retirement for 20, 30 years is they come out. You guys did, If you guys didn't know this, this is a, a an epiphany. Yeah. Like a paradigm shift is that these massive companies with billions of dollars are coming in and gobbling up these types of notes. You don't see it happening because you, you're not hanging out with these people, but they're going out and they're buying up this note that Jerry just created mm -hmm. for, he created it for 90, sold it to them at a discount for $81,000. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. And here's a cool strategy, guys. So if you're a wholesaler, I actually wrote a book on how to do this. You can get it on um, Amazon, how to flip notes. So let's take this scenario again. Let's say that you go to a seller finance guy like a Pace, and he's just a, a mom and pop guy. Pace isn't a mom and pop guy, but let's say you go to an individual investor and he created a seller finance note and he's got, and he sold it to a borrower who's making a payment. And let's go back to those same numbers. Let's say it's 90,000. You could approach this, you could approach this seller finance seller, this investor and say, Hey, if I brought you 81,000 in cash, would you sell that note? And a lot of them will go, man, I've been I've been collecting payments. It's great, but man, I kind of would like to have 80 grand in cash. That sounds pretty great. Yeah. Then you, well, you can add on a fee. You can say, if I can find you a buyer to buy out your note, will you let me do that? Now you can either charge the seller a fee or you can go to your note buyer and say, hey, if I bring you notes for sale, will you pay me a fee? And a lot of them will. They'll pay you a finder fee. Guys, this is amazing. I've, I, so I don't do this. I, I have a couple of Eric Sage, one of my good buddies, Nick Ligamaro. They, this is what they do for a full-time living. What they do is they go to big hedge funds and they go to big pension funds and they go to people who have billions of dollars to deploy. And they go, can I just go find you guys notes? And they're essentially flipping notes yeah, to people. This right. is what you're talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. So you can make a wholesale fee merging a seller finance person with a note buyer and bring those two parties together. And charge 5000 10000 whatever. And you guys are still wondering, how do I get started in real estate when there's like, you literally just can be the middleman on a deal like this? Yeah. But Jerry, these notes aren't laying around on the street. Like, how, how do there, I find I forget, these notes? I forget what the stats are, but there are there are hundreds of thousands of seller finance notes. I would imagine, I bet you the numbers are in the millions. Yeah. Um, millions of seller finance notes that, are being, that have been created. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a interesting. So Nick Legamaro, you should know Nick Legamaro. You don't, I don't know, know Nick. Nick is kind of one of these low key guys. He goes and does notes, just like most people in the note world. They're very low key. They're not outwardly talking because it's like this amazing world that you don't really have to know a lot to just crush it. 
he there's websites that you can go find these notes on. Yep. And then he goes and builds relationships with big swath buyers that are buying mm-hmm. big swaths of these notes. And he goes and he'll go to a seller. Okay, this is great too. So his last deal he did was about 300 notes all in one tip. package. Yep. So a landlord um, about uh, so a landlord went out and he built a big portfolio of about 300 units. Okay, all seller finance. Not yet. Okay. He then goes, I'm ready re- to retire. An investor like me or you goes to him and says, hey, I'd like to buy your 300 units on seller finance. This is, the guy goes, eh, I like that because mm-hmm. I can then receive payments over mm-hmm. time. I can also mitigate my tax burden. I can get a higher purchase price. And he can get out of managing those units. Boom. So there's benefit, 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 benefit to the seller. The seller then no longer has 300 units. What does he now have? A note. He has either a note or 300, 300 individual notes. notes. So he goes out and creates 300 individual individual notes with this buyer. Because these were single families? Yep, these so, were okay, single so families. Okay, so 300 notes. Okay, then what ends up happening is somebody like Jerry, which you're talking about on your Amazon book, teaches a wholesaler to come to this guy and go, hey, those 300 notes that you have, if I could find a buyer for you, is it okay if I find, if I get a fee? He then goes to like a hedge fund or he goes mm-hmm. to a big buyer and he essentially goes out and find, <clears throat> finds these notes and wholesales these notes to, to the big buyers. Mm-hmm. How much money does this person in the middle have to have? None. What, what credit? They have to have credit, right? None. No credit, no nothing. Just, Do they have to have like job history or tax returns? No. You got to know this person and this person and bring them together. That's, That's it. it. That's all you got to do. It's crazy to me to think about this because when you guys realize that this is going on all the time, Amazon doesn't, well, at one point, Amazon wasn't creating their own products, right? It was Amazon buying other people's products and bringing two people together and making a wholesale fee. That's what they were doing. They created a platform. You just have to be the Amazon Mm -hmm. of selling notes. You go find the person that's a supplier, and then you go and find the buyer. What I teach in my book, too, is you actually don't even have to contract this deal. What you can do is you can can create a broker agreement Mm -hmm. that, hey, if if I bring you two parties together and you agree on terms... You agree to pay me X amount or X percent do of I have the to deal. Do you have license to do that? No licensing to do that. Wow. And no contracts. So you're not obligated now. You're not actually you're not actually contracting and then wholesaling your contract, which is a whole nother layer, right? You're actually just literally brokering between the note holder and the note buyer mm. and getting paid to do it. Okay, so this is amazing. You guys should go check out that book. He'll put the link down below. Here's an wow. I just, I'm learning new things about this board every day. Let (laughs) me see that. Let me see that. So here's another way to use notes. Okay. Jerry creates notes. I create notes all the time, not even on seller finance situations. Okay. So let's say that I want to go and fix and flip this house. The house I buy from a wholesaler, let's say I buy, maybe it's one of Jerry's students wholesales me a deal for $300,000, which I have bought deals from your students. Mm -hmm. They sell me a deal for 300. How am I going to buy that deal typically in the smart way to buy that? You're going to leverage somebody else's money. Okay. So I'm going to go get 80% of that money from a hard money Mm -hmm. lender. And I'm going to go get 20% of that money from a private money lender, which is like my uncle, right? Or maybe from Ben, our video guy, right? Ben maybe comes in as a private money lender. He says, hey, I'd like to make some uh, like a monthly chunk of cash off of your fix and flip. How do I make sure that that private money lender is secured on that property? With a note. With a note, which is cool. So now that note makes Ben feel happy and secure that he gave you 20% of the down payment to not only cover the cost of the purchase, but he's also going to help you out with the construction. He's secured, he's happy. And at any point, this is interesting too, any point Ben goes, I need my money right now, something popped up, Mm. he can still sell this note to one of somebody else. These notes are convertible, transferable. They're like Pokemon cards, okay? You can sell them, okay? So... That's really, really cool too. Here's a, here's a way I'm using notes right now on a, on a deal. So I've got a deal. Um, I own it. I bought it um, originally sub two. Okay. It's a property on Sterling. You guys have seen this house multiple times. I actually used to live in this house before I bought this house from you. Okay. So yeah. Sterling, I bought it originally for about 400 grand. Well, today it's now worth 700,000. So a lot of people will ask me, Pace, where, how can I use the equity I have once I buy a sub two deal and it builds equity? How can I use that mm. equity? Do I refinance out the equity? 
And I say, yeah, you can refinance out the equity if you want. But as a creative finance investor, it's like this, it's a disease I have. I don't ever want to go to the bank, right? I'm always trying to do things without the bank. It's like a fun challenge all the time. So it could be a home equity loan, you a HELOC. Do, you could do a home, a home equity loan. But you're credit. saying no, because no. now you got to go to the bank to get that. Right. So what could I, how could I use that $300,000? You can create a note. You can create a note. <laughs> I can go to Ben, the video guy, and go, Ben, I need 300 grand to go buy a, a, a pool of other houses over here. I need this 300 grand. I will secure you against this property on Sterling if, and I will create a note for you here so I can use that 300 grand for this other property, either a down payment, right, or something else. And the reason why, remember guys, this note, the reason why Ben would say yes to this is because the $300,000 note has, it's safe, it has value because you're attaching a deed of trust or a mortgage depending on your state you're collateralizing the note with the equity in the property. Right. So Ben could say, there's collateral protecting my note. I could I could foreclose on my note and get my money back, sell right. the property, get my money back. Okay, so notes are powerful. Anything we want to, else we want to cover on notes? No, I think it's just creating the instrument and then using the instrument. Like you've done deals where uh, you bought seller finance mm -hmm. and then you help the seller sell their note because they want cash. Yep right? Or on the other side, any of these types, you can wholesale notes to, so there's just I, I all have, the things. I have a really specific note story. If you want to, if we want to do notes part two, I could do a story right now, break it into a second video. That's my best note deal I've ever done. You want to do that? Let's do it. Okay, cool. Guys, to wrap this up though, if you really want to learn creative financing at a whole new level, go to paceandjerry.com. When you get to that page, sign up for a strategy call. You're going to get on the phone with Pace's team. They're going to walk you through Pace's mentorship program and see if it's a good fit for you and really just kind of go through your goals, what you're trying to accomplish. Like we keep saying in this series over and over and over again, you've got to learn how to do these creative deals. These are just tools in your toolbox. The more tools in a toolbox when you go on appointment or when you're looking at a deal, it opens up an entire world of opportunity where you can just make money in so many different ways. Yeah. That's how powerful that is. So check that out. And guys, we're going to go to part two yeah. of notes. Yeah.